Okay, the last couple of things we've got to do are put a pie button in and have something that can remove a product and display the total. So we'll just get those things finished off. So I'm just going to close this, stop this running, and we'll begin work on those. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, we might as well just get rid of that button now. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to go to my toolbox, grab a new button, and I'm just going to pop that one in. Go into properties, and we're going to rename that as BTN delete item so that's going to get rid of uh, something out of the list and we're going to go down to the text on that button and I'm going to put an ampersand delete that just gives you the um, basically the shortcut for that so delete and we'll also put another button in and we want this button to be for paying so I'm going to make that button quite large just line that up with the other one so it's nice and same size so properties just going to change the button text to pay. Um, I'm going to change the um, probably the background and colour of the button as well. I think just so it looks a little bit more obvious that that's the one that you want to press. So make that green and change the name to BTN Pay. And finally, I'm just going to put in a text box that is going to be used to display the total. So let's just grab a text box and put that over here. And that will be where the total is displayed. So we might want to put a list. Uh, sorry, we might want to put a label in front of that as well. But let's just quickly change that up. So um, txt um, total. Okay. So we've got all the various bits and pieces that we need. First thing we'll do is we'll work on the delete button. So let's go and put an on click event for that. So let's just call that delete item. Okay. What we want to do here to delete item, we need to find the item that's currently selected and then simply delete that item. So it's not really that difficult to do. So what we'll do, we'll go and find the list item. So list products chosen dot selected. Now we can actually get the whole item from here. So selected item and that's going to give us hopefully a product back. So what I'll do is I'll make a new product called selected product equals the selected item remember that we're going to have to do a cast here so that we get the right type back from our list so table product we've now got the select, uh, a selected item all we need to do now is to go to our products list dot items and we just need to basically delete that one from the list so if you look down the list you've got various different things but we want the remove and we're going to actually remove you can see it's expecting a table product item we're going to remove the select product from that. That's just going to get rid of that for us. Okay, so let's just see how that works. Let's save and run that, check that we get the desired result. So open it comes, let's put a couple of bits and pieces in. Uh, let's remove that large cup of coffee there. That's worked fine. Let's get rid of the small coffee. Brilliant, we can see that's working. We need to do something to update the display, but I'll leave you uh, that to do. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, we're now going to just take a look at how we do the automated total. So we're going to go into the view code. And what I'm going to do first of all is just make a private variable that's going to hold uh, a decimal. Um, and we're going to call that a transaction total. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to encapsulate that. Now there's two ways of doing this. If you've got the uh, professional version uh, you can just right click refactor and just encapsulate that whole field press OK and apply or if you haven't just need to simply type this in where you can see here I've made the private variable have a lowercase t and the public version have an uppercase and you can see inside here that there are a get and a set method the nice thing about this is every time we change transaction total or assign it to value we can actually specify what happens as that value is set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to space that out a little bit better. Um, and you can see here that what we've done, where the set value comes in, it gets stored within our private transaction total. So the other thing I can then do is just say text total uh, dot text equals 
and I can just get that um, transaction total dot to string. So basically what happens is every time I change transaction total, so assign it a value, it's automatically going to update the text box. So that's going to be really useful to us. So what I'm going to do now is choose where to put the insert. Now the first obvious place is when I update the product uh, I'm going to want that value to change. So because I've now got this uh, pub this public property here, transaction total, I can just take that and I can say equals, I'm just going to make it equal to p dot price, p being the current product. Okay, so hopefully now that will be set and it's going to update the text box. Now it's just saying here cannot uh, convert decimal type to decimal value, so we just need to do uh, a little bit of work on that. I'm just going to cast that into a standard decimal, okay, just to make life a bit more straightforward. So let's just see how that works. Uh, press play, take a look, open the tilt, put my values in, and at the moment you can see that we've got £2.50 there being displayed, and now £1, but at the moment the values aren't being added together so we've got to do something just to fix that so let's just close that down so if we go back into the code obviously the problem here is what we've done is we've just literally updated the transaction total with the current price what we want to do really is we want to take the old transaction total and add on the new price and then display it so a simple tweak like so and let's take a look at that open the point of sale and now we can see that the values are indeed being added together. So this is quite good. Again, for the delete button, all we've got to do is subtract the amount from the product. So I'll leave you to look at the sample code for that. So I'm just going to close that down. The only thing we might want to do there is provide some sort of formatting. Obviously, we can't do that at this point. But if we go back up here, where we've got our set method, there's nothing stopping us at this point doing the formatting. So let's just do that here. So instead of saying to string, let's just go string dot format. Um, again, this funny syntax where you've got the curly brace, that's the parameter of the argument, and we want to uh, format that into currency. And the argument is going to be the transaction total there. Finish that off. Again, give that a run, have a look at what we've got, open the till, add a couple of items in, and you can see there we've got a nicely formatted price. So that's nice and straightforward.